friends. Okay. I applied like 17 questionnaires. Okay. And I, well, some of them said no or observing them. Okay. Um, so these are the ones that for me. But now, these are good options, but they have like an advanced level, six, five, or four level English. And I choose, I chose these two because they have like a basic level, and they I I like the the opinions of the the error. They correct most of the times like in the whole group, mm -hmm. and there is like a contrast in this part. So one corrects the whole group, and the other one corrects like most commonly in small groups. Okay. So I have a whole group and small group. Okay. All right. Good. So we'll focus then on these two. Yeah, these two participants. All right. And have you spoken to these teachers yet as far as scheduling? No, because I yeah. really got yeah. these questionnaires on Saturday. Okay. <clears throat> so I am going to. One of these teachers is working on the start program, but in the in the office. So I'm going to I'm going to the office to talk to her in, in space. Another okay. one I can contact him to a friend. Okay. Do they have classes during the week or on Saturday? On Saturday. On Saturday. Okay. Here at the university. Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me take a look at your method. Do you have any questions about what you completed last week, the method section, or the instruments that you uploaded? No. Do you have any doubts? Let me uh... Okay, just a quick comment here, um, just to um, remember to look back, maybe revisit this last paragraph, um, and maybe you can include these questions in the last paragraph, but keep it within paragraph form, so you'll have um, some leading questions here, and then maybe a final sentence or two to close the paragraph, okay, and you can... You can eliminate this this text here. Might just make sure that they this, these questions are represented up here above in this paragraph. Like including the context of the paragraph. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. So you don't need like a separate section for the research questions. You can discuss okay. it in one paragraph. Now, on uh, remember the level two headings to bring this back all the way to the left. So you might want to check all of your level two headings to make sure that they are all the way to the left. Mm -hmm. Be careful. This probably happens when you maybe copy and paste. I'm not sure, but um, just make sure you always go back and review this so that you don't have formatting problems. And be careful with comma splices. So here you can just say participants for this investigation are students and teachers from extension courses um, or who, let's see, are adults who are uh, mm -hmm. students and teachers. Any words that are not in English should be italics. The number of students These are the number of students in total for both groups, or? Yes, in total, an approximate number. Okay. I'm going to ask the teachers how many students do they, do they okay. have. Okay, so maybe teachers. later you can go back and say, okay, teacher A, and talk about teacher A specifically, how many students, what group. See, in the participant section? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for now, that's fine, but uh, make sure it'll need to be in more detail once you get that information. So I'm just going to put a note here to remind you that to revisit this later uh, with once you have all the details. Okay. okay.
not necessarily more text, but in more detail. So yes. you might be able to replace a lot Change of what you the have. Number right. And specify. Right. Um, yeah. Now, um, I want to bring this to your attention and also in, in, and uh, encourage you to look at your entire document to look for the spacing that you have between paragraphs and headings and headings and paragraphs. And you'll notice here that you have slight, slightly more space between this paragraph here and this heading and this heading and this paragraph. And I think also this happens when you copy and paste over from Word because by Word, by default, it automatically adds space between paragraphs, automatically. So when, when you're working in Microsoft Word, you have to actually go in and, and change the setting to remove that extra space. In Google Drive, it's pretty easy. You can just click this icon here, and you'll notice you're given the option to remove space before the paragraph and remove space <coughs> after. So if you just select this and then go back select the bottom one Some bold options. It. right because it's adding space before the paragraph and adding space before okay. and after and so basically you're having additional space between each paragraph both before and after how so, do you call the space between the lines of each in the in a paragraph the space well i call that the uh, spaces is everything i think Okay, we call it just spacing. Spacing? Okay. Spacing. So what, uh, in general, I'm using the word spacing for two different reasons. When I say spacing like this, I mean space between the, the, um, the, oh. the, the paragraphs or the lines or the headings. But sometimes mm -hmm. I notice that there's not enough space between like sentences. So like there'll be a period, and I'm not so much maybe not in your case, but sometimes I see this where there, there's a period and there's no space before the next letter. So I'll highlight that and put spacing. So if you see that where I've highlighted text within a paragraph and I use the word spacing, I'm referring to the actual spacing with the space bar uh, okay. between words or letters. But if I, you know, uh, if I just indicated like at the end of a paragraph, I typically will mention spacing. Like uh, here I might even say spacing. To indicate that there, you know, maybe see how there's there's a blank line here between method, and, mm -hmm. so um, that's how I tend to. So maybe to I can apply like the whole the whole document these two options. Yeah. But the mm -hmm. reference list is like something different, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Right. Right. So you could select all the text except for the references yes. or the appendix, probably not. But um, yeah, and then you just make that change one time. Yes. And you're done. Now, if you continue to copy and paste over from Microsoft Word, then you may have to go back and do, this do it again. So, you know, I try to do it. At, if you re, if you remember to do it in Google Drive, I would do it all. And then when you're working in Word, also check if you can remember how. If you if you go into Microsoft Word, there's a paragraph option at the top with a little box to to give you paragraph yes. options, and there's a little box. That says something like um, "add space after paragraphs so about that," and there's a little check mark, and you have to go in and deselect that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a a thing with Word. So, so double check, yeah, you know, your headings. Bring that over. Now, I would recommend using one paragraph for each of the sections. So remember. Uh, how many words do you have here? Let's see. Let's take a look. Looks like you have more than 500 written. Let me see. Okay, well, it's close, close enough. Yeah. But I would, I would use, I would create one paragraph for each section. <clears throat> for instruments, procedure, and, and one, for paragraph one paragraph for each. So you have essentially three paragraphs in the method section, but one paragraph for each of those three sections. Okay. And but you can use sentence uh, connectors and you know still connect your ideas from one idea to the next or from one sentence to the next. But um, I would try to just include one one paragraph. I think mm -hmm. So in here, 
we could bring this paragraph up. Um, now, I would call this just a teacher questionnaire, and then you can indicate that you're using it to select, even though I'm using the term filter, um, or you, you could say it later. So this is a teacher questionnaire designed to, I would say, select the participants for the study, and then go on to describe the, the, the questions that are in the questionnaire. So... I would probably not use this this word here. <coughs> the questionnaire for teachers. All right, so I would describe Make sure you describe the instrument. So you could describe the the items that were on the the questionnaire. So whatever questions, if they were open or closed questions, and then describe in general, very brief, what type of questions. For students, there's a questionnaire and an interview guide. All right, I would break this down. Um, and start with, think about the order in which you're going to present your instruments and, and discuss them in this section the same order. So if you're going to apply the teacher questionnaire first, then just say uh, a teacher questionnaire was used to filter and select the participants. Some of the que most of the questions were open questions, and they talked about or they addressed this or they okay. So you have talk about the, the actual instruments. Then you say for students. Now, are when are you planning on implementing the student questionnaires? Right. What's going in the, the second week? Because I was like okay. applying the question, the teachers and the students questionnaire like at the same time. All right. yeah. Okay. Well, the the same week. Okay. All right. So, okay. I, let, let, let's look at your procedure first, and then we'll go back to the instruments. So the first instrument applied. So I would change this to the active voice. Okay, and you can use the first person in this section. You can say, I applied teacher questionnaire to how I many X amount of teachers mm -hmm. and and then I applied or then I observed so let's run down this the quick order here so you did a teacher questionnaire what did you do what are you planning on doing after the teacher questionnaire well the filter questionnaire yes after that, I was talking about the robot, the play the robot, about the observation. Okay, so you can observe. And then, and then the teachers and students question. So how many observations are you going to make before you apply the question, the questionnaire? I was thinking about... Well, I'm sorry, the is it a questionnaire or an interview? I'm going to play both the questionnaire and the interview. All right, so we have the teacher questionnaire, and then you're going to observe the class. How many classes are you planning to observe? Two or three classes. Because observations are going to be like the three weeks. Okay, so let's say there are three observations, so you observe three classes. Then the, the questionnaire. Okay, so you have a student. But do you, do you, you don't need a... Teacher question, do you? Or? I, I have it. In the yeah, I don't think you need a teacher question. Only with the, the interview? Yeah. Okay. All right, so you have a student question. Mm -hmm. How many students are you planning on applying this? Well, question? I was thinking the, the option that, that you gave me, like, uh, like stepping in front of the class, uh, talking with the students about well, how they feel, because it's only like to apply the interview. Oh, no. That's a questionnaire? Oh, okay. Yeah, the questionnaire. Yeah, the questionnaire to, I was thinking about the whole group. I don't know if it is okay. a good option. Okay. Well, okay. So, <clears throat> all right. So, let's plan on this. You, you, you apply a, a student questionnaire, and then what's after the student questionnaire? Student students. 
then the final they introduce to the students and to the teachers. So for this I need to talk with teachers in order to Okay. So you have you have the interviews teachers first or the students first? Students. The students. And then the teacher. Okay. <coughs> so all right, um change all of pass the passive voice to the active voice. So first I applied teacher questionnaire to in order to filter. Um, I then observed three classes or yeah, I then observed three classes. Then I applied a student questionnaire, then I applied an interview to the teacher, then I applied an interview or a focus group to the students. All right. Um, now when you use C Appendix A, I would bring this to the end of the sentence. So when you're including your citation, I would bring that to the end of the sentence the first time you mention it. So I would move it here. And if C Appendix B, then you can say uh, three observations were scheduled, or you can say the observation sheet was used to observe three different classes, so reference the instrument. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Now you say here that during the first week of data collection, two, two different questionnaires were applied. So we're going to take out the teacher questionnaire. But are you applying the student questionnaire the first week? The student questionnaire? Oh, no. It says here during says, the first week of data collection, two different questionnaires were applied, teacher questionnaire and student questionnaire. So we're probably going to take out the teacher questionnaire. Yes. But it says here you're going to apply the first week of data collection a uh, student questionnaire. Or are you going to apply it when you finish the, first observation. the three observations? I mean, no, because or, <coughs> I'm going to be applying the, three, the different instruments at the same time because, well, the, the observations are going to take place like three different classes, so okay. three different weeks. Okay. So during this time, I need to, to be applying the, the other instruments. All right, so are you going to be applying, are you going to be observing three, one day per week? Yes, because, well, it is in, on Saturdays. Okay. So I need to observe, like, one one hour of class. Or, because uh -huh. I need to change from one classroom to the other one. All right, how about this? Why, since it's a Saturday class, how many hours is that? Five? Like, five hours. So why don't you just uh, uh, one week observe a five-hour class, and another week the other student teacher a five-hour class? Yeah. Okay. So well, it is. I mean, if if you think that observing a one Saturday class can get the information that for your research questions, because most students are are observing three around three classes, but they're one-hour classes, and it's during the week. So they have to go three days. But you can observe, I think, one class, one Saturday class, and hopefully get what you need in that one Saturday class. Okay, so maybe <clears throat> in, two, in two classes I'm going to finish the, finish the observations. And maybe yeah, I yeah. can apply the, the question of the students on the second week to the right. teacher. That's an option. So think about that and go back and kind of revisit this and think about exactly, think like if you were, if I want to duplicate your study, include in here what I need to know to, to duplicate it. Okay. Tell me step by step and say on Saturday, you know, I'm observing this in a Saturday class, it's five hours, I see. Okay. Okay. So um, I would take a look um, here again at this procedure. When you finish with the procedure, then go back and to the instruments and <coughs> present the same instruments in the same order that you uh, like, that you apply them. Okay. okay. Yeah. 
And let's see. I would single space here. And for the, the instruments, I, I, I would single space. So even though everything else is double space in here, uh, just to save space, um, you can single space and just check your formatting. Notice how you, I think, left the formatting from yes. the references section. So double check your formatting here. Same here. This is fine here, or just simply remove these, this, and just leave. What? We'll leave it one time, and because you're not really not going to know how much space you're going to need, so you can just print this one instrument, and then just write in time activity description each time. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> So each instrument, what I would add is a heading, a level two header after or just below uh, the appendix over here on the left in bold text and indicate what instrument it is. Teacher questionnaire, observation sheet, student questionnaire, um, but, but list that very cl uh, clearly here at the top. So you can look at appendix C, okay, student questionnaire, and then everything else that you have. So make sure you double check each of the uh, appendix. So observation sheet, right? So. So the the title of the instrument right after the, the appendix. Yeah. So for example, let me so show you. Some of them like. <coughs> like here, I would just do a hard return. And what is this? This is the teacher questionnaire, right? Teacher. Right? And do that for each of your instruments. So the format that it has for each instrument about the Centro de Ciencias and the logo of the university, uh -huh. is, it, is it okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I would just single space this. That's, that would just to bring it up a little bit higher. Okay. <clears throat> And just double check if you're not going to use a teacher questionnaire, like the second teacher questionnaire, remove that. Now, you might be able to use some of those questions in your interview guide, maybe. Yes, I'm going to. But check that. Make sure that the questions are very much directed towards what you observed. That if they're not general questions like, how do you think about this? I mean, generally, it has to be very specific to what you observed. So, even though you haven't observed it at this point, if you have to go back and Adapt it. That's fine. If you need to go back and make small changes before you actually implement the interview, mm -hmm. that's that's okay. All right. So I would just revisit again your instruments here, and then uh, and then you know we can just uh, if you you know I can take a look at it again, or you know, or I'll take a look at it obviously when you finish. But if you if there's uh, some doubts, if you're not sure, uh, let me know, and I'll be here. I'm not going to be here Thursday or Friday, so uh, if you want to discuss anything, make sure you come by by, by Wednesday. I'll be here all day Wednesday, um, and we can discuss. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? Any questions about the literature review? <clears throat> um, any feedback that I provided there, or anything else? No. Okay. All right. So then, um, I guess that'll be all. Then we'll see you next week. Yeah, just come by if you need to discuss something. I would keep all of this information, but you won't be using any of the data from the other questionnaires that you applied, only the two questionnaires from the two participants that you chose to do. So, okay. okay. All right, Javier, well, we'll see you then. Uh, see you next week if I don't see you beforehand. Okay. So for next, week's, next week, I will bring some data for observations. Okay, sounds good. Okay, All right. See you. See you. Have a good week. Excellent. Bye. Do I close the door? Or? That's okay. You can leave it. Yeah. <clears throat>